Hey guys, welcome to my build guide slash build overview for my Chaos Crit Molten Strike Pathfinder. A few disclaimers at the start. Um, this build in this configuration is made for deep delving. It abuses tech that only works in delve and it requires mobs to constantly be hit for a life gain on hit to work and it requires you to be hit to gain rage. So just keep that in mind. You can still kill all of the uber bosses with this configuration. You can do all of the content in the game. Um, just maybe the build would be a bit better with a few changes for that type of content. Another disclaimer, this build is not budget friendly at all. Um, I think the minimum budget to start this version would be around 200 divines. Um, the version that I'm showcasing here today, my gear, is worth about, I would say, 600 divines. Right, let's start off with a showcase of a Day. Of the build at Depth 2006 with an Azeroth free node. At this level of depth, it makes no sense to kill all the mobs, so I'm just running to the node. I'm not up to that just yet. The build is made in a way so that you can just stand in the middle of delve nodes misery. and pretty much AFK, hold right click, even at this depth. Sometimes you get mobs like this, crit resistance plus the cycling damage reduction that just don't die for a minute straight. Yeah, that's just there for you. Right, there you go. Now let's get into the details of the build. Right, first of all, the question that I get asked the most in in game chat. Um, why not just go poison? Um, and the answer to that is just because poison is dot capped and for delving dot cap is not enough DPS. Um, 35 million is way too low to delve at above 1.5k. So I just needed to go any hit based version and which is where I landed on chaos crit. Right, let's talk about offense first. Um, gonna go into detail on how we actually do damage. First of all, and the most important thing of all is the new uh, reworked Anoint Vengeant Cascade. Vengeant Cascade allows all projectiles to return to you. For Molten Strike this means projectiles bounce on the floor once and then bounce back to you and bounce again. So they are dealing damage twice. And with how Molten Strike works, um, you're normally only hitting around 50% of all the primary projectiles. Um, but the bounce back actually comes towards you. So if you stand exactly under the boss and hit all of the returning projectiles, this anoint is a three times DPS boost for Molten Strike. So it's really insane. Otherwise, um, yeah, Chaos, um, just stacking flat Chaos pretty much on everything where it can be stacked. Um, we're getting it from the Claw, from the Crucible Tree, from both rings, from the Gloves, from Abyss Jewels and from the added Chaos Damage support. And that's just the baseline damage that we are scaling. In general, um, we even go Pathfinder for this build if you go hit and not poison. Um, for the new node, the Wither on Hit node for Pathfinder and the increased effect of Withered. This is just very strong. 
and gives you a wither pretty much instantly at max decks with how Molten Strike works, with how many hits we're getting. So this is very nice. And personally I also wanted to play Pathfinder just for the defense setup, but we're gonna do talk in detail about that later. And the last thing for damage, which is delf specific, but which is really crazy, is actually this gem, Phantasmal Vengeance. Phantasmal uh, Vengeance in general is a skill that gets triggered when you take damage. So you have a 30% chance to trigger the skill when hit. Um, the really OP thing is the Phantasmal version it gives you a 40% chance to gain one rage on hit, and this is per target. So as you can see, I have it linked with an Awakened Enhance 5. So it is 104% chance to gain one hit rage on hit, which I can showcase you if we just quickly run into a map. And if you take a look at my rage bar here, currently we're at 0 out of 50. But if I dash into a pack, you can see I'm getting like 10 rage or something for big packs instantly. So this is in Delve, when you're getting hit by 30 mobs or so, this is really insane. So while I'm here, let's just quickly grab all of the Nico missions, so you can see how mapping goes while you're deep delving. You just run through the map and don't pick up anything. Kind of just skip the Nico mission. Right, there we go. Good. Yeah, this this combo, um, the Vengeance combo together with Berserking is just really crazy for bosses in general. Um, it makes me one phase all in like in the duration of Berserk and doing the first 50% and after the intermission with full rage again from the intermission and Berserking again and um, one shotting him in like 10 seconds. So this is insanely good for Delph. And I think that's pretty much all for the offense part. Um, the offense is not really that complicated. What's really complicated and intriguing is the defense part of the setup, which is what I'm going to be talking about next. All right, let's start to talk about the defenses of the build. And there is a lot to talk about here since the build is very, very tanky. So let's get right into it. Um, yeah, as general, for defenses, I'm running a uh, Tempered by War setup with Sublime Vision. So I'm converting all of my elemental damage that I'm taking to fire. Sublime Vision converts 30%, Tempered by War converts another 50%, and the perfectly rolled Dawnbringer converts the rest of the 20%. So I only need to worry about fire damage from elemental hits. Um, we're doing the same thing for physical damage as well. Um, converting 95% of physical damage to fire currently. 100% would be doable by using another um, lethal pride, but that would lose three passive points and it's not needed at all. Yeah, the physical conversion happens where 40% from the chest, 16% from the helmet, then 10% on the watcher's eye, and then 10% from the lethal pride. So we're only taking fire damage from all physical or elemental hits, so we only need to worry about fire resistance and not evasion, armor or anything else. Um, yeah, that's why we are stacking to 90% max fire res. This is done by the aura effects from Purity of Fire together with some stuff on gear and on jewels. Purity of Fire itself gives 7% max fire res a perfectly rolled sublime vision with 40% aura effect gives you plus one more and allows you to drop the corruption on the chest for another corruption. Then we're getting 2% from the boots. We're getting 4% from the new crucible node on shields, 4% to max fire resistance and minus two to any other max resistance, but that doesn't matter for us. And the last 2% are gotten on a Megalomaniac with the Molten Ones Mark Notable with another 2 max fire 
giving us a total of 90% fire resistance. Next defensive layer, of course, since we are a uh, ranger, we of course have 100% spell suppression with one spell suppression wheel and the phasing mastery, which is always up because of the quartz flask. So we're capping spell suppression with this and then with two perfectly rolled T1 rolls on helmet and on boots. So this gives us 100% spell suppression, which is basically a staple in any build nowadays. Now let's get into some of the more interesting defensive layers. Um, the first one, which is basically the main reason I'm Pathfinder, is flask effect scaling for Ruby Flask and for Progenesis. Um, with all of the small flask nodes and the Nature Spoon notable and some other stuff on the tree and on gear, um, the Ruby Flask has 143% flask effect granting a total of 50% less fire damage taken. And Progenesis has, I think, 90% flask effect, granting 47% of life of damage is taken over time instead, basically doubling um, my life pool. Those two things alone are a ton more defenses if you can sustain the damage from the Progenesis, which is not a problem for Molten Strike. And why is that not a problem? It's because life gain on hit is pretty busted for Molten Strike. Um, all of the life gain on hit I'm currently getting is from the Claw Implicit, which is the reason why I actually went Claw instead of Chaos Dagger. So 46 life per enemy hit, um, together with what I calculated before with the 15 projectiles hit per attack, together with an attack speed of Check Molten Strike, um, Phase 9 takes a bit of 8, with, with Blood Rage it's 9, with Frenzy Charges I think it's 10, and then with the Ancestral Protector we are at like 12, and with Berserking up, everything up, Protector up, I think I'm like at 18 attacks per second, times 15, times 50 life per hit, equals to around 20,000 or so health gain per second, from life per hit, which is basically any any degens or any damage that doesn't one shot me is just does not matter and is instantly healed back to full again. There are still a few more defensive stuff and uh, defensive layers that I have. Um, first one is the Arctic Armor aura. Since Arctic Armor is not an aura but a spell, um, you can still reserve it with the Sublime Vision. Arctic Armor grants 22% less fire damage taken from hits while stationary. And since, like we saw in the showcase before, I'm constantly stationary, I'm standing still and I'm just attacking, tanking everything. This is permanently up and is another source of less fire damage taken. Which perfectly pairs with the Natural Affinity Cluster, which grants Nature's Patience. And nature's Patience um, makes it so you gain grasping vines each second while standing still. Um, you can have up to 10 vines on you, giving you 20% double damage and 10% less damage taken. These are these things that are coming from the ground and you can see them up here as well. So since we're never moving anyways, the slow doesn't matter. I'm just standing here attacking. If you want to remove those grasping vines, they will actually stay on you while whirling blazing. But if you want to remove them, that's why I have the second movement skill. If you first blink, they will all get removed at once. Small things uh, for the defensive layer. Another small thing is the corruption on the chest for a 6% reduced fire damage taken. So this is another very small EHP gain. And of course, um, for any delve nodes where you're pressing Berserk, you also have the 20% less damage taken from Berserk. So if we check POB, all of this with Berserk up amounts to 270k elemental max hit and 159k um, first max hit, making me very, very tanky to nearly all things in, in this game. Only downside currently in my defensive layers are is bleed and poison. Um, bleed especially, 
and if you don't have anything to hit, bleed can kill you very quickly and in these depths. Um, there would be the option to go for two bleed avoidance um, abyss jewels to fix this. However, there were none good on the market and I didn't craft any yet. And personally, I don't feel like the bleeding is too much of an issue currently for me. So, yeah, I, I didn't went, I didn't go with that way. Then let's quickly talk about the Pantheons that I'm using. Um, I'm using Solo Funaris and Solo Shakari, both upgraded. Um, Solo Funaris is mostly used for the chance to avoid projectiles and the reduced elemental damage taken if you have been re hit recently. Since this is nearly always the case in Delph, this is just another 6% reduced fire damage taken, which is very strong. And the Soul of Shakari is taken because of the poison cap to three poisons, making it ne nearly poison immune. And also the 5% reduced chaos damage taken is actually also very good with the new chaos mods that a few biomes can have. Chaos damage is actually the thing that I'm the weakest against by far. So this is just a very good pickup. All right, then let's start off with going over some of the gear that I'm using. I'm gonna be giving a few pointers on how to craft the things as well. Um, yeah, let's start off with the flasks, I think. This is the most important thing because of Pathfinder. Um, currently using two unique flasks for a free magic flasks. The ruby flask, of course, will have to have the increased effect. And the attack speed is just the best on this flask because it gains the most uh, effectiveness, it's just the most damage. Um, otherwise, I'm using a quartz flask for perma phasing and for the spell suppression chance. Um, the quartz flask is rolled with the gain free charges when you are hit mod and reduced mana costs during skills, uh, for skills during effect. Um, this together with the flask mastery of gaining 4% life when you use a flask is an additional layer of defense or of recovery rather um, for when I can't attack things and I need to heal or at the end of delve nodes when I'm going back to the to a town so I don't die from any degens, any bleeds. I can just spam all my flasks and they will keep healing me. Yeah, same mode is crafted here on the diamond flask as well, together with uh, stun avoidance. I think you need a bit above 50%, depending on if you spec this life node or not, since it's also a stun avoidance. And you can go a bit lower percentage on a stun avoidance, but they shouldn't be too hard to craft or to buy. So that's very important. Yeah, diamond flask is needed um, together with the bottle faith to cap the to cap the crit chance. So without the flask, I would be only at around fifty percent. But since all of the flask effects scaling for the diamond flask and for the bottle faith give such a ton of crit chance, it just caps me to I think ninety six percent currently. But that's because my claw is pretty bad. So I'm gonna be recrafting that so I get one hundred percent crit chance in the near future. Yes, then let's start talking about the claw. Um, the claw is just a basic chaos damage claw craft, um, actually very easy to do. Um, it's done by essence spamming for one of the two critical strike mods for T1 and then going um, until you have an open suffix and the crit mod on T1 with the essence attack speed and then just going suffixes cannot be changed, uh, reforge crit since there's only two crit mods um, that can roll and you're just hoping for a high roll on the second one. So if you want, you can repeat this infinitely until you get the full tier one pre suffixes. I just went with the tier two currently because I wasn't too sure if I would be recrafting this claw in the future and I think it will be. So for now this is fine. Prefixes can then be done uh, by going again, suffixes cannot be changed, and then remove add chaos. Since there is only one chaos mod, it will always hit the tier one added chaos flat, so that's guaranteed. And then you just suffixes cannot be changed. Um, 50 50 Ashling for the chaos pen, which is, I think, a guaranteed unveil if you craft 
uh, a specific craft, but you would ha need to check craft of exile for that. And then we just finish finish with the hits can't be evaded mod, so we don't need any accuracy, since we can't use precision on a sublime vision build. Right. Next up, um, yeah, most important two parts of the build: the chest, cloak of flame, for the forty percent fuse damage taken as fire. Also, very good corruption target. I think those are currently pretty cheap with the. Um, either plus one max fire res. If you don't have 90% yet, I would use that. Otherwise the 6% reduced fire damage taken together with a second good corruption like the increased damage taken or even plus two projectiles or plus two AOE gems for Molten Strike are all very good damage increases. Yes, and then next, the thing that's gonna be the hardest to get or to buy or the most expensive thing to buy is actually the shield. For the shield, we need a roll of at least, I would say, 20, 20, 19. Something that I have here, 20, 20, 20 would be better, of course. But the cold and the lightning damage roll have to be 20 and 20. The physical damage can be a bit lower. But the hard thing is going to be getting this mod on the Dawnbreaker with good rolls. The plus 4 to maximum fire resistance. I think on trade, those are currently going for around 80 divines. So it's not not cheap at all. Mine, the other mods on it don't really matter. Good is just getting some flat life. Um, I have one min power charge as well, which helps me a bit with the crit chance, but otherwise the other nodes don't really matter. You're just looking for the plus four to maximum fire resistance. Right, then next up the helmet. Um, helmet craft is pretty important. Um, we, this is the perfect spot to get the aspect of the spider in. Um, helmet is easily crafted by spamming just some life essences uh, on a fractured chance to suppress space until you hit the T1 chaos res. And then crafting on the aspect and going surfaces cannot be changed. Ashling 50 50 again for the um, AoE gems. You need the plus two. AOE because the auras are in the helmet and you need to get level 23 on the purity of fire for the next breakpoint for plus for more maximum fire resistance. So you either need the plus two on the helmet here or you can do it on the gloves as well. Or you can link the purity of fire with an empower but then you will have to fix your mana because it wouldn't fit anymore. So this is just the, the best option overall. And finishing off the prefixes of course of course with the Corel craft, the first damage taken is fire. And very important also for the Eater Implicit, the first damage taken is fire, that you don't go first damage taken as cold or lightning, because that happens after the damage conversion from the Tempered by War. So it needs to be taken as fire. Also the Searing Exec Implicit, there is no real good one, so I went with a defensive one of some fire recoup. Since we're only taking fire damage, this is basically recoup for everything and just helps a bit with the degen from the Progenesis. Yeah, then the Amulet. Amulet is actually currently running a bricked uh, Strangled Grasp Amulet with 4 anoints. Um, you don't need to brick it, so just buying a Strangled Grasp is already the best Amulet you can get on this build. Um, we're anointing Whispers of Doom for one additional curse. So we can use Sniper's Mark and Despair. We're anointing Vengeance Cascade, of course. We need that. Then I am just went with the best damage node and the best uh, EHP node, which was Disciple and Training for just a ton of life. And Heart of Darkness for just a lot of Chaos Damage and Chaos Pen, which is very rare on, on gear Chaos Pen. Next rings. Um, for rings, I would recommend getting one onslaught on hit ring. Um, if you don't have onslaught on hit, you won't have it on bosset, bosses. You can still get it on kill from the boots. So this can be a luxury upgrade. I played a long time about the onslaught on hit, so it would be fine. Personally, I went for a pretty insane synthesis base here with increased max life and onslaught on hit. And also some strength, but that's not that important. For the ring craft, um, both rings are crafted pretty much the exact same way. Um, if you can get a fracture for the um, attribute that you need, either strength or int, 
then you can go for the tier one life otherwise i would just go for the unveiled life it's just made by spamming some essences until you hit the t1 int or t1 strength and then suffixes cannot be changed uh, multi-mode suffixes cannot be changed um ashling to guarantee to only uh, to unveil chaos to get one prefix that's veiled then block mana unveil life and then multi-mode with mana cost and chaos damage to attacks pretty much done already that uh, string same thing is done exact here just spam some essences until i got t1 life and then did the same multi-modding right next up gloves um gloves are upgraded recently um perfect uh, slot to fit one additional abyss socket um, abyss sockets are very good because of all the flat damage they can give to chaos skills and to chaos attacks um, since we are really in dire need of these of the base damage but yeah, otherwise this was just made by, by spamming hollow fossils, so the abyss socket fossils, uh, until I got an open suffix and an open prefix, and then just doing suffixes, suffixes cannot be changed, and veiled chaos, until I got a veiled suffix and unve unveiled either this chaos damage to attacks if crit recently, or the attack speed while focused, both are very good, both are nearly the same. If you can choose, I would go with the with the chaos damage one. The one I have is just more consistent, and you don't have to press focus then. And then prefixes are just uh, eldritch eldritch currency until T1 life and one open prefix, and then just craft increased damage during flask effect. It shouldn't be too hard to craft these gloves. Then boots. Yeah, boots is just a pretty standard avoid ailments, chaos res suppress, boots craft. Um, yeah, I think I just bought those for 10 events because I already crafted the same boots three times this league. But yeah, I think it's just made by getting a fracture on either the suppress or the chaos res and then just essence spamming with the ailment avoidance essence until you hit the other thing tier one, either suppress or chaos res. And then you can metacraft the prefixes until you get T1 life with the average currency. Or you can just use crafted life as well. And then Ashling, the movement speed. It's pretty pretty default bootcraft. Just important here, the, the implicit, you get the two plus two to max fire resistance. It's the exquisite level, so you need to upgrade it with the orbs of conflict. And for the Eater of Worlds, there are no really good FXs and increased elusive effect is some damage gain since we're using Nightblade. So I went with the increased elusive effect. For the implicits on the gloves that I forgot, um, we want the plus two strike gems, uh, strike targets, and the 7% spell suppression. I think I only need like 5% currently, but that just caps the spell suppression chance. Yes, and the hardest part to craft last. Um, the belt, um, yeah, the belt is, you don't need the strength if you have the strength tier one on a ring, so the strength is not needed, but you will need two tier one or one tier one, tier two flask effect mod suffixes. And then I just ash linked the prefix flask effect, the 18%, that's really important. And then crafted life and then just slammed it with an hunter exalt. All the outcomes are good. You can get either percent increased life or increased chaos damage or flask effect, uh, increased flask charge when you crit, then you um, get one node on a tree back. But yeah, all of the mods you can gain is good. Are good. Also, good thing the love enchantment, the enemy is withered by you have minus six to all resistances, also lowers the chaos res, so it's also a very good DPS upgrade if you can get it. I think the bases are pretty expensive with, with the enchant on, maybe just run some yourself. I think I got two enchants in in one single love that I ran, so with this one, so I was very lucky on this step. Yes, I think that's all of the gear done, I think. Let's um, talk a bit about the tree. For the tree, let's start with the ascendancy first. As I explained before, we're going Pathfinder. Um, Pathfinder has some good nodes, 
and has three good nodes, sadly no fourth, so we're specking two small loads for the Uberlap. Um, yeah, it has the chance to wait on hit, of course, which is per immediately stacked to 15 stacks with Molten Strike because of so many small hits. Then the Flask Charge is gained for the pretty much perma flask uptime, not fully perma while standing around, but perma in combat. And the 30% flask effect. Yeah. For the tree itself, um, I'm currently running a setup with two large clusters and four mediums. A um, few notes about the tree. Um, pretty much getting all of the flask effect that's available on the tree that I'm specking. So um, I got two flask wheels with also the flask mastery for 20% chance to gain a flask charge when I deal a crit. This still has 100 milliseconds internal cooldown, but with all our hits, we're proccing this constantly. So it still gives us 10 flask charges per second and makes all of the flasks permanently for bossing, which is exactly what we want. Otherwise, yeah, it's just specking life nodes, it's specking projectile nodes. Um, this one is pretty important. Reduce projectile speed increases the single target DPS of Morton Strike. So I want uh, less, pro less proc speed mastery as well here. Since we're hit based, we can use point blank as well, giving us 30% more damage. Since Morton Strike do doesn't travel very far, it's always 30% more, which is very good. Um, yeah, for the lethal pride, for the position, um, pretty much has to be here to not lose any passive points. Um, I would recommend getting one with at least two fist damage taken as fire and 10% chance to intimidate on hit. I think mine is the best seed you can get for this build. Um, it also has the 5% chance to deal double damage on multi shot which is very good. Otherwise, like I talk about, the spell suppression mastery is needed to cap spell suppression, the 8%. Um, we use the dagger wheel for the um, elusive effect for night play support, with the dagger mastery for elusive also grants 40% to crit multiplier for skill supported by night plate. Um, we go the full claw wheel, with skills about the Nightblade with 40% increased effect of Elusive. Yeah, for Delving currently, I also have the plus one additional enemy. Um, just gives a bit more coverage, a bit more DPS, a bit more shotgunning as well on, on smaller, on bigger targets that are surrounded by smaller mobs, which is very often the case in Delve. Um, for the Mark Mastery, you actually have a few options. You can either not spec it at all, or you can spec the marked enemy cannot deal critical strikes. That's what I would use for bossing. For telling, however, the marked enemy cannot regenerate life um, is sometimes needed to just kill some rares that have life region and one or two tank mods. Otherwise, they would not die at all. So this is needed for delve. Yeah, let's talk about the clusters. Um, yeah, let's start with the other one first. Um, if you are not on the ultra high budget, I would use this cluster two times. Um, it gives martial prowess, which is just the best damage node you can get on a dagger and claw cluster, together with the fan of blades, which it gives us one additional projectile, which is very, very good for Molten Strike. I'm using two crit medium clusters um, with basics of pain and pressure points giving just more crit chance, capping my crit chance. Important thing here is you want the chaos resistance and you want the attributes on the clusters. I have it 4% here, chaos res, 5% chaos res here, 3% chaos res here and 3 all attributes here. Um, similar to here, chaos res and all attributes. You need that so you have enough intelligence to use everything. Yeah. One rocking one medium cluster for flask effect duration currently to get spiked concoction for alchemist genius, which is another 10% flask effect and 20% flask charges gained. And then the second notable is just increased flask charges gained from fasting, it's just more, more flask uptime. 
Yes. And my last medium cluster is a megalomaniac, um, which is needed to cap to 90% fire resistance. It has the Molten Ones Mark Notable and the Fan of Blades Notable. Pretty much this is the best DPS Notable you can get. And this is what you need for, for an anti uh, max fire. I'm pretty sure there are none of those on the market currently, or if there are, they are very expensive with those two nodes. Alternatives would be to get a fan of blades and the second Max Ferris um, notable. There's one that gives just plus one, and then just use the chest corruption for another plus one to get to 90%. And if you can't find that as well, then just don't use fan of blades and um, check for any other good damage notables maybe culling strike or something which is also also very good but i wouldn't wouldn't drop the two percent here you still want the 90 percent max virus and i recently upgraded my second large cluster um, from an eight passive one to a 12 passive one the 12 passive one i'm running with a fractured fan of blades so I fractured it myself and then just alt spammed to 55 uh, 35% increased effect and 3% attack speed. That just gives a lot of a lot of damage on all the small nodes. And the fan of blades notable is that strong that we still want it on here. So yeah, pretty sure there are none to buy. You have to craft this yourself if you want that. It's a good damage upgrade, it, but it loses a bit of tankiness because you have less nodes to spec on life. For example, I had to unspec some life nodes to fit this one fully in. But yeah. I think that's all for the clusters. Um, let's talk about the jewels a bit that I'm using. I uh, talked about the natural affinity already. So this is a small cluster. Perfect place, by the way, to get the corrupted blood immunity here. I think those are only like 40 vines or so. Should be pretty cheap pickup. Would definitely get uh, corrupting blood immunity on, on one of the jewels. Then I'm running ancestral vision to get ailment immune. Um, since I have 100% sweat suppression, um, that gives me 50% from this jewel. Then I have 20% chance ailment avoidance from this cluster here. And the rest of the 30% is on the boots. So in total I am ailment immune with just this jewel and nothing else needs to be changed. Then yeah, the lethal pride of course. And then the watcher's eye. Watcher's eye, you want a max roll of the first damage taken from hits as fire while affected by purity of fire. Good is if you can get the unaffected by burning ground as well. There are actually a lot of burning grounds in this game, which can be annoying if you don't have any regen. So this is a very good two mod pickup for quality of life purposes. And the last tool, of course, is the Sublime Vision, yeah, which is needed for the build to function. Like I said earlier, the 40% effect here gives you one more Max Virus. So if you can pick up that, um, it is a small, small tankiness improvement. And as last point, let's talk about the gem setups, starting with the main gem, Molten Strike, using the Diversion Molten Strike, because it gives two to melee strike range, makes targeting a bit better. Then swing it with Awakened Dead Chaos, with Multi Strike, Conk Effects, Void Manipulation and Night Blade. Conk effect is actually even better than the 40% more area damage because it makes the area of the bounce from the balls smaller, which gives us more coverage um, against a single target, increasing the hit chance from the primary projectiles by about, I think, 15% or so, which is very good. Net plate is pretty much a whole crit multi, a lot of elusive effect. Um, yeah just very very good support gem. You can't reset elusive anymore so we don't need withering step um, and the config in the POB is done with half elusive effect so it's averaged out. Next the Aorus um, running purity of fire of course then I'm running anomalous blood and sand um, gives a bit area damage and less AoE as well which is good 
Um, also, the alternate quality gives um, increased projectile attack damage, which is very good. Then Arctic Armor, um, diversion is just a bit more less damage. And last aura is the aspect of the spider, which is also in the helmet. Then um, we have two DPS support setups. Um, one is with anomalous blood rage, granting chance to gain frenzy charge when you hit a unique enemy. Since we're doing so many hits, um, this is perma frenzy uptime for all content. Um, then an infestesmal and chestnut protector totem. Um, the Tesmal version gives increased buff effect, which runs even more attack speed. Supporting both of those with an Enhance gem, using an Awakened Enhance 5 here. Then the second support um, setup is Sniper's Mark setup, together with Diversion Mark on Hit, and again an Enhance. Also using the Phantasmal Vengeance for Rage Generation, which I showed earlier. Then the movement skills, I'm using Frost Blink and Welling Blades. Frost Blink is linked with Culling Strike for bosses. Um, why Frost Blink over Flame Dash? Just because you can still keep attacking while Frost Blinking. It's good for dodging boss mechanics um, on even higher depth um, for owls, for example, with some really, really uh, with damage mods. Yeah, mainly to blink around in boss fights. And we need a non instant, uh, we need an instant travel skill to remove the grasping vents. Then Berserk. Berserk is used for bosses. Like I said earlier, with the rage gen from the Vengeance, you can use Berserk pretty often. Very good. And then uh, filler links I am using currently is Anomalous Reckoning. Um, gives 40% chance to deliver debilitate enemies, um, which is a bit uh, more damage reduction. Supporting that with Divergent Rage support, which grants chance to grant rage when you need supported skills. And support skills when you hit an enemy, grant one rage on melee hit. So I'm um, generating here is a bit more rage generation for single target, and it makes it so the rage doesn't decay if. Um, vengeance is doesn't proc versus bosses, for example. Yes, and yeah, whirling plate is also linked to the diversion rage support, so theoretically, I could generate rage just by whirling around, like you see in the bottom free rage, but it's mostly just just a bit quality of life. Yes, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, I will link the POB for this build in the comments as well. Um, this is my current configuration. Feel free to check out what I've configured. Um, make sure to edit the rage number and Saber Berserking if you want to check your boss DPS for normal bosses. And for normal enemies you don't have 20 hits actually because i have 10 projectiles and i would say 16 hits is more realistic so this would be the the realistic dps yes there's still some improvements to be made to the build um, if you find anything make sure to comment it down below and i will take a look at it yeah if you like the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more build updates i'm normally doing very always doing tanky builds with hopefully decent damage for high investment so feel free to check my other content as well and wish you all a nice day see you